If I eat an extra large meal and go backwards, this floor is no longer straight. Okay, um, we built, I built. Why do I say we? I'm not schizophrenic, I think. We think we are getting really closer to uh, the temperature we need to glass. It's snowing again. This is the template. We are getting uh, more and more ready uh, with the templates to all the cutouts we need to make an extension of the floor aft. So we have this final bulk bulkhead. bulkhead. This is an original wall, obviously, and it was in decent shape, it seems. So I want to keep it, of course. There is no need to remove it unless it's bad. But it is on the high side. If if I plan to have the floor extend into the aft cabin area, I want it to extend as far back as possible. Back to about this. There is about 25-30 centimeters extra to gain. So I will try to level uh, with the laser now. Right, yes, yes. And we can immediately see that we need to go up a little bit. So, and we see that the laser is raising. That should be about it. Let's see how it's on the other side. It's a bit high. There we are. Starboard side. Then we are two mil below, three maybe, on the port side. Now we have quite a good line on this wall. Question is, what kind of mistake am I doing now? I'm measuring on top of the floor, which means this plywood plate, that structure, is meant to be underneath that plywood plate. So obviously we need to take that into consideration. Then the next question is, how thick are these plywood plates compared to the new ones I have got? I need to find that question. Then that answer, find that answer. I found the question. If I found the question, then I need to find the answer. Okay. That means I will measure from below, I guess. Or will I? Maybe I won't. If I measure from the top, then I wear, know where it should end. Then I can take away the thickness of the new plywood plates, and that should be about correct. If it's one or two mil difference, what difference does it make? If I eat an extra large meal and go backwards, this floor is no longer, no longer straight. Okay, let's continue work. I guess we will lower with 22 mil. That should be 22, but is it? Is it really? Measure once, fail twice. It is 22, it is 22. How come that worked? I show you that there is a difference of about two millimeters from this side to this side, but according to this wall, it's perfect. There is nothing that is really up or down or water level on the boat. I will soon have to put my intention on this engine as we need to get this structure off and I need to lift the engine a little bit firstly to clean it secondly to to um, um, rust treat it it has rusted somewhere it has been it's not an old engine it's only from uh, 2018 I guess and uh, it has been sitting in the boat for those years, quite quite a, a moist environment. There are lots of places where there are traces of that. We need to clean the engine and rust treat it and then level it off so we can see if it fits. So we need to raise the engine about one and a half centimeter. So, status number one. I forgot uh, that the engine 
it's not meeting the shaft. The shaft is far too much backwards and the engine is actually going forward. That will raise the engine a bit. With this two centimeter, we can see that it's way too high. We need some smaller pieces, smaller pieces, and the engine a bit further forward. Yeah. So it's about correct. It's slightly higher than the engine, or is it? Maybe not. Now we have plenty of space on this side. Not so much space here anymore, but maybe, maybe enough. Let's see at this problem scenario. This is no okay. It's five or six, seven maybe millimeters. Let's see in the front of the engine. And now we have reasonable space here and here. This has a potential for disaster. There is a point that I haven't thought very much about uh, when grinding the inner hull. You also create an open surface to the fiberglass and if it's contaminated with moisture it might actually dry a bit off also from the inside even though it's probably better from the outside because that's where the moisture came in probably and, and stripping the top coat, get a gel coat and leave the fiberglass to dry might be a good thing. But if that's not interesting, which is not for me because I'm done with the outside, then the second best thing might be to do this. I didn't consider that point, but it may be, it may be a slight value. Good for me, good for the boat. So I remove this, I will just cut them right off here. I need to grind this off in, able, in order to make uh, the fiberglass stick. The fiberglass that I am supposed to, to uh, touch the, this wall with. So all this need to come off and I will do that uh, later. And uh, before doing that we need to protect the rest of the boat because I don't wish the boat to get full of fiberglass dust again. I think we should clean up a little bit. There is so messy and I have hardly any space to work. Got the boat cleaned up a bit and uh, now it's time for the last task of today. That will be the grinding of this area. So first I have to set up some protective uh, plastic for the dust not to spread all around the boat. And for that purpose I have bought this. This plastic, and this is uh, supposed to just being hanged with uh, its sticky cordos or something, so we'll see. Yesterday things didn't went, didn't go, go so well, and definitely not according to plan. I was hoping with this plastic to be able to isolate the areas from which the dust shall settle. However, uh, due to probably high level of moisture uh, in the boat, the glue, the tape didn't stick and it all fell down and really became a mess. So the boat is full of dust again everywhere. And that is a setback. In my opinion, it, is, it was so great not having any dust.
So, look at this lovely bed. Doesn't it look cozy? I think so, I think so. so. It kills me to remove it, but this is only shit. We'll do it properly soon. So I'm outside a special shop where they mix uh, paint and I'm looking for a blue paint for my nanny engine. It has rusted and uh, pieces of the paint has fallen off. And uh, I brought one of the fallen off pieces of paint to this shop to see if they can mix something similar. So let's see. Paint is not straightforward, which it actually is, but it needs to be sprayed on. And uh, then it needs a clear coat over that, which is way too much work. So I must consider either buying a, a fresh, too much, much too expensive paint from the importer of the engines, or to make uh, the paint without metallic color, which will make some marks on the engine, but it's not important. It's still in the engine room. So. Let's consider. Back in the harbor, it's such a wonderful spring day with 10, 11 degrees above the freezing point. And that's just wonderful. And we are getting really closer to uh, the temperature we need to glass. Let's go and clean the boat and do templates. The dream of summer at sea. Still slightly distant, but it helps with a little bit of sun. Oh yes, it's still messy. So, making templates for the wall bulkhead towards from the pilot's house towards the bow. There is a question about this area. This is sort of soft. Should I make an opening so I can make the template go all the way down? That is the question. That's the first question. The next question is how big can I make it? And obviously I can't make it that big because it has to fit in this door. Maybe one meter 20, I don't think so. Maybe one ton, one meter ton is the way to go. So I need to check if it's possible to go any, any larger than that, but I don't think so. This is the iron keel and that stretches from the bow and all the way back to almost to the sump behind the engine. And that is of course nothing to do with it. It is here and it's supposed to be here and it's okay. I could make this template attached to this. What purpose would it have? Would it make the hull stronger or will it make noise? I guess the hull is quite stiff down here due to this, so it has to be the structure. And the structure on this is not very important because it already has the floor, which is one structure. It seems to me that the only advantage to go below this area is that one might have the possibility to make a watertight bulkhead. Should I do that? I think not, because there are only so much advantage compared to the disadvantage. And the disadvantage is of course the extra work and the, the problem with the, keeping the tubes from the shower, the toilet, and all that into a watertight structure too. And also electrical cables, which might not be brought forward underneath the floor, but maybe, maybe, maybe. So let's see, um, let's make a decision. Let me think, I think, We'll keep the wall on top of the floor and that wall we can let go totally all the way down. There are actually too much sun right now. It's hard to see the laser. Where is it? Where is it? I should work at night. 3.6. 3.6. While on this side it's 2.9. But on the same side as 2.9, if we take the window and measure, we can see that it is 2.25. 
while on this side where it was wider below it is actually 1.9 i guess and what i need to do is to measure from what we can see because it's very easy to get stuck in something that may not be too important so i think what is important is probably this structure and if we can get the wall to follow this structure as close as possible it will end about here then then it will look okay so uh, and and then we have a discussion of whether this should this bucket should end here and we have an opening underneath or we should cut away this and that and let the bulkhead go further down and maybe follow this cast iron keel problem with that is of course that uh, if it squishes towards the iron keel it might make noise as the boat rocks what do you think um please leave a comment below one meter sixty so i'm making the template for this very easy template. I don't really need a template for it even, because it's, I guess it's square, but I'm making it anyway. Do it seems like there is an angle here, so I need to trim a little bit of something, and that will be that one, I guess. And there we are, it's okay. We can bring it to the garage at home. The electricity was away and I just turned on the diffuse again and hearing some very strange sound from a little bit further from the boat and the diffuse went out and this is what happened. This is a timer that uh, actually coats the electricity that is being used and uh, it seems that these units does not like being outside. So this one with the glass up has probably filled up with water and is short, has shorted. So I need to report that to the harbor master and decouple this and then we can go on again. I have the same model myself, but uh, the clue is do not leave them outside. They do not like water. Okay, having glued these pieces on, it's a good start. I'm not 100% sure if I should extend this bell cut out to this stage to stiffen up this wall. I'm not sure it is necessary as it is really, I, I can't see that there are any particular pressure or, or pulling on that wall. There are nothing particular i can think of so why should i do that i might even rather have it open
Okay, um, we built, I built. Why do I say we? I'm not schizophrenic. I think, we think. Ah. Uh, we have built this uh, structure uh, template and um, obviously I need to split it in two in order to just get it out. But also we will need to make it in two portions. So I guess I would split it here and here and just make a mark so I'm sure that we connect it correct again. So obviously I will need to continue with this side as it will at least go up here, but the floor will continue up to here. It's not always possible to do boat work. Sometimes the garden needs a bit of fixing too. And this is the day for that. It's lovely weather, the spring is coming and it's just wonderful. So the template is almost done. I just need to know where the floor is supposed to be. So I need the laser again to take a measurement on how high. <laughs> okay. So this is the template. It's a huge structure and are we going to remove it in one piece? No, we can't do that because we will not get it out of the boat. Obviously, am I going to cut larger pieces out from this? Uh, no, I'm not because there is not enough room in the boat to work sufficiently. So I will need to get this structure home in the garage to be able to make a totality out of this, probably from about three, two or three, probably three plywood plates. We have to get it out of that door. Got the template into the car as well. So now it's home to the garage. So let's move. So we got the garage cleared out from all the bikes that were stored from friends and neighbors. And uh, we have space for the entire template. And now I guess it's uh, only to pull a few of the plywood plates and put them on the floor and start drawing. However, I'm going to the boat instead to make a new template, uh, the next one. So I will cast my attention to this wall, which again means I have to clear out this mess. The particular thing about this wall and making a template for it is that it is actually angled. Just placing myself in, in the middle of the boat, pointing directly ahead, we can see that it is actually not pointing towards the bow, but slightly offset. And this structure, of course, has a wider angle. Uh, the other thing is that we did cut away the floor here to have the support as deep as possible and also on the cast iron keel. I think I should do that here too. Particularly taking into consideration that it is placed to support the mast. This, this six holes marks the foot of the mast. And as we can see, the hull, no. The wall is actually a little bit offset to the footprint, which means that I will make a strong structure and place it into the corner with a sort of a foot uh, hold to hold it up like this. Um, and it should rest 
on the iron keel and not on this floor that is actually strong but not that strong so let's open up the floor Okay, grinded this area, not sure if I got it on film, unfortunately. No! Han! That is a long train, isn't it? How can that fit into such a small town? We like to call ourselves city, or actually sometimes also the country of Bergen. Big thoughts, small town. Great, it's snowing again. Winter is back. Back in the boat again, and it's time to start building this template. Is a boat. It, as we can see, it's now targeting most of the the markers. However, not everyone. But if we move over here, then we are spot on again. If we look on the ceiling, we are off again. And I don't like that. How is this happening? But however, I shouldn't consider that a huge problem because uh, this will be sufficient for the wall to be placed and uh, it shouldn't uh, come out as a huge problem. So, the template is done. As we can see, it's quite a fit, quite a tight fit, actually, and it's okay. It's not rocket science, but it is okay. As you can see, as I have strengthened it quite a lot since I will have to try to jiggle this out of the boat without it breaking apart. Up here, I will have to do adjustments because there will be uh, another strengthening plywood plates uh, lost in about here. Let me dive on here and have a fibble fun. Can't only do boat work. I'm off to see a little cabin up in the mountain. A little bit for fun, a little bit uh, small, serious. I might like to have one, but uh, it depends on the price and uh, it should be quite uh, simple design and uh, very basic. We'll see what it is. It's a bit for fun, yeah. Okay, I'm now at the cabin up in the mountains and uh, it's looking good. It's a magnificent view from here. It's that cabin that is for sale. So let's walk. As we can see, the cabin is uh, built on the edge. This is some of the fascination with how this is placed. This is inside. Trust me, it's a very simple cabin. So what do you think? 
Should I buy it or not? Do I need extra work? Yes, I do, don't I? So, about the cabin I was looking at the other day. I guess you wonder, did we buy it? Yes, we did. Why did we do that? Because it ticked off quite a few of the requirements that we had on our list. There was, of course, some requirements that was not ticked off, but it's really hard to get everything we wish ticked off. So this one has very many amenities for us. And the condition of the cabin itself is not too important. It's the properties, the, the ground, and all of that, which is important. The cabin can be fixed. It should be too much. <sighs> but as you say, need more work, less money. And how much did it cost? Approximately about $60,000. Of course, Norwegian Kona is what the real currency is here, but None of you know very much about that, I guess. And dollars seems to be the way to, to measure things. So that's it. Thanks for tonight. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video and its content, which is actually the video, I guess. Anyway, uh, please leave a like if you have. and. Uh, you don't of course don't leave a like and also you can subscribe to have more of these wonderful videos so until next time have a great day life anything